let's get right to it. On January 8, 2009, Father Richard John Newhouse succumbed to an infection following a bout with cancer. There was only one Father Richard. His razor-sharp mind, his rumbling baritone, his wit, good cheer, and wonderful sense of humor were always combined with a deep and abiding faith. His death nine years ago at the age of 72 was a great loss to the church and to intellectual life around the world. Though most of you knew Father principally as a guest on this program, I'm sure you felt like he was a friend. And he was. Over the years, we spoke to him about the latest Vatican news, his conversion to Catholicism, his own near-death experience, not to mention countless papal events. Here are some of the great moments we spent with Father Richard John Newhouse. Here he is reflecting on the Catholic faith in America. Catholic story was you came over as immigrants in the late 19th and early 20th century, uh, poor, downtrodden, no Irish need apply, etc., etc. Then in the 1920s and 30s and 40s, Catholics moved into the ascendancy. Huh? And then with the election of John F. Kennedy, uh, Catholics were crowned in their full confidence of being thoroughly part of the American experience and believing that being Catholic and the American reality were perfectly compatible, that they fit together like hand and glove. So you didn't have to be identified as a Catholic in public. You didn't have to be assertive about it. Uh, indeed, to be so would be bad manners because it was just assumed that there was a neat fit between the American way of life at which Catholics had succeeded so astonishingly and being Catholic. It's only as our culture has increasingly fragmented and fallen apart and lost any kind of moral coherence or consensus that we realize that there's not a neat fit anymore automatically between being Catholic and being American. Here's Father Newhouse commenting on that. In 1990, he left the Lutheran faith to become a Roman Catholic, but not without some anguish. He had long held the dream that Michael just talked about, that Catholics and Lutherans would unite, but it was not to be. It became evident to me in the mid and later 1980s that sad to say, and I talk a little bit about that in the mm -hmm. book, uh, real Lutheranism, not my theological construction of Lutheranism or the theological construction shared by many other Lutheran clergy mainly who called themselves evangelical Catholic, but real on the ground Lutheranism had decided to be permanently a separated Protestant denomination. And meaning no offense to all my dear Lutheran friends who remain dear, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, um, I could not um, settle for anything less than the fullness of Catholic Christianity as embodied and most fully and rightly ordered through time in the Catholic Church. And so at that time, I realized that the dream that I had encouraged so many others to invest themselves in, and certainly in which I was deeply invested, that that dream was, if not um, aborted, certainly delayed even to the point of moving into the realm of eschatological hope. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I had to make the move. And in some way, as I say in the book, Raymond, you know, there's some of my Lutheran friends who say, Richard, you jumped the gun. You know, you were precipitous in what yeah. you did. Well, I was a Lutheran pastor and writer and theologian and uh, for 30 years. I mean, so I gave it a pretty fair shot. <laughs> 30 years is a long time. I'll say. Here is Father reflecting on death and the life to come. Everything has been faced that needs to be faced in order to live confidently and trustingly and lovingly. That in Jesus Christ, in God's revelation in Jesus Christ, the worst that could possibly happen has already happened in the death of Christ when the darkness overcame the light. 
And so that when Christians say, this is what I, this is not only for this book, but God willing, maybe for my life's ministry, if one could communicate this, and if I can more fully understand it and live it, that when, for example, Julian of Norwich says, all shall be well, all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well, that this is not optimism, this is not sentimentality, this is not some kind of idealistic dream. This is the simplicity that is on the far side of complexity. This is the life that is on the far side of death. Despite the serious intellectual work undertaken by Father Newhouse, he was personally the most delightful company you could imagine. During the long hours of our papal coverage, you often saw glimpses of his perceptive and occasionally cutting humor. Here we are, uncertain as to whether we have a pope or not in 2005. Afterwards is a clip of Father and I discussing the historic confusion. Watch for the cutting humor at the end. Bell sounds at St. Peter's. How is one to distinguish between the bells of conf confirmation and the bells tolling the 15 minutes have passed? So we wait. Yes. I'm as frustrated as you are, if not more frustrated. If, so just hang tight. We'll have some confirmation in the coming moments. If I our hope. Lord had entrusted the church to angels, we wouldn't have had this trouble. But there are bells. That is not the six o'clock bell. No. That but that's is. That's from the local church over here. Well, that was the word was Peter's. that as soon as the word went out from the Holy See, all the churches of Rome would start ringing their bells. Right. Are we going to hear that? But the question I had when I heard that initially is how, Who's going to let them how know? are all these little How's pastors that? spread throughout Rome to know when the world's media spending millions and with uh, <laughs> jumping Raymond, on top of Navarro Valls at this hour? Raymond, at the risk of interrupting our chatter, it seems to me now that we have to say, Habemus Papam, we have a pope. The smoke is white. No, there's no one is confirming this yet, and we will not either, Father. <laughs> you can say that. Well, I, I okay, no, I'm, I'm, uh... <laughs> we have confirmation. It appears we do have a new pope. It appears. Habemus Papam. Habemus Papam, as best we can tell. Habemus Papam. Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger is the 265th Pope, the 264th successor to St. Peter. And there it is, the great moment. I, uh, once again, you scooped me. <laughs> <laughs> you but then you notice I qualified it toward the end. Yes, right? I did notice yes, that little right. wiggle room you put in yeah, there, exactly. near as we can tell. Uh, that's the kind of fellow I am. I, I just. Um... I don't, I don't like to say, I, as um, the recently retired uh, Cardinal Archbishop of Washington explained the other day that uh, on NPR, that, and I, that's my idea of leadership, is that you walk right down the middle of every issue. So <laughs> I quote, I quote. Apparently, some people find this amusing. I don't know. I, I, I'm simply quoting. I haven't practiced my. I'm simply here. quoting His Eminence, who said that that he learned this when um, Pope John Paul visited Newark, and uh, then McCarrick was the Archbishop of Newark, and he noticed that uh, the Holy Father walked right down the middle of the aisle, so that the people on the left and on the right could both relate to him and he was solidly in the middle. Now, I think this was, um, on the part of his eminence, a rather unique contribution to the understanding of the character and person and pontificate of John Paul II. Really? That he was a man who refused to take sides. A man of the and, middle. And, um, and that's... That's your path that's as well. That's my trajectory through life. Here is one last bite from our friend. Uh, for all of you who might be struggling with illness or facing death, here's Father Newhouse reflecting on his brush with death in 1993. Through these series of operations and uh, medical um, uh, missteps and right. uh, um, is um, that uh, I'm not in control um, and that that's a very good thing that uh, there is a, a surrender. Is there, is, there is a surrender that is not simply resignation. It's not simply uh, shrugging your shoulders, mm -hmm. but it is a surrender of discovery, of discovering that there is a, 
control, there is a power, there is an intentionality that can be absolutely trusted. And uh, in the deepest darkness, uh, uh, there is finally uh, no reason to fear that even at the heart of darkness is, um, is hope because at the heart of darkness is Christ. How I miss my dear friend. May Father Richard John Newhouse rest in peace.